everyone, this is David Stark from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today, I'm joined by Jody Thompson, who wrote, starred in, and produced Still Today. It's a fun relationship drama comedy that's available digitally. We're going to talk to Jody in just a second, but first, let's check out the trailer. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that'd be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. You deserve this after what she put you through today. We can outboard Peter Hooker. They're at least 1500 Maybe get you a discount check or something. Discount check on his wedding day? Are you nuts? No discount. There's no discount. Please, Brian, do it for yourself. Hi. I'm Heather. Do you want me to come in? It's not always that perfect, is it? No, it's not. Perfect is boring, anyway. She's got you like a yolk in a cracked shell. You're like a shadow of your former self. You are such a beautiful, blue-eyed, red-headed woodpecker who used to fly. Hey, Jody. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me, brother? Yes, I can. All right, all right. How are you? Doing well. How are you? All right. Good to see you, David. Yeah, good to, good to meet you. Thanks very much for uh, for talking. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So this is Jody Thompson. He wrote, starred in, and produced Still Today, which is a it's a kind of fun relationship drama comedy that's available digitally. You can get it, you know, pretty much any platform and uh, check it out from the comfort of your home. Um, he, uh, he he took on a lot for this movie. So I guess uh, you know, what was the inspiration? Was it was it a, a really rough period in your life because this uh, no 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 <laughs> it's just a very vivid imagination so uh uh there was no being stranded at the altar or or anything like that but um honestly uh myself and the director tommy walton we we met on another film and we just wanted to make something and i've always been a fan of the old school um, rom-coms like Sleepless in Seattle or When Harry Met Sally. Um, so we just kind of wanted to kind of do something to pay an homage uh, to, to those films. And uh, yeah, so we also wanted something that kind of took place all in one night. Uh, so the economy of the film was was uh, going to be easier than, let's say, an alien abduction or a jackknife, 18 wheeler or something like that. You know, we wanted something that we could accomplish uh, with just a few people. And uh, uh, I love films that are just basically people in rooms talking. Uh, and those those are uh, the ones that, that get me the most. So yeah, that's what we uh, went for. And uh, hopefully people like it, so. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you succeed. I really like that kind of focus because I think, you know, especially with indie films, films like this, like relationship dramas, kind of smaller cast, you can you can do, and they look, you know, well done. They look professional. If you try to get in this like larger, you know, more effects focused type of scenarios, it just it sometimes just looks off. I mean, that's not to say the indies can't do really good, you know, action films and things like that. But I think it, this is kind of the sweet spot for trying to get a small cast to tell a you know a heartfelt story and do it really well. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We, again, we appreciate it. We kind of, uh, you know, don't get me wrong. It's, it's even, even a small film with, with just that cast, you know, this thing was four, four plus years of, <laughs> so, uh, from cradle to grave. So yeah, it took, it, it, it took a while. So, uh, but we are super proud of it and, uh, you know, we're excited that we got picked up by Gravitas Ventures, uh, and they've been super uh, awesome to work with. So we're really, uh, really proud of uh, getting uh, to work with them, and 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 they've been kind of a dream partner. Yeah, and Gravitas is really kind of. I, mean, I, I I guess I didn't follow them much before the pandemic, but they seem to be kind of pumping out a lot of good indie films and a lot of, of content to keep everyone occupied. Uh, were you kind of shopping this around before everything kind of went to hell? Well, you know what? It's... We actually finished editing right about in March, I think. And that's <laughs> when the world went to crap, right? So yeah. we finished and I'm just like, you know, you obviously want to do your traditional festival runs and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, Tommy, Ugh. 
this ain't looking good, brother. You know, I, I don't think there are going to be many festivals out there. Uh, and we'd sat with it so, so long, you know, like I said, four years. Uh, when you're with something that long, you're like, I don't know if the jokes are funny. I don't even like looking at myself anymore. I don't <laughs> like anything. You know, you just can't, you, you can't tell anymore. So we wanted to get the opinions of uh, out some outside uh, people. I'm in the Atlanta uh, acting community and been acting here for uh, about 25 to 30 years. So a long, long time. Uh, but to me, it was important to, when you're in a community like that, people know you and love you, you know, and, and, and I just didn't want uh, existing contacts. I know that sounds weird to, to, to kind of use them. I wanted to get someone out outside. So I had a friend of mine in LA um, hook us up with uh, Ramo Law, and then they they sent it out to about ten different distributors. We got responses from six, and that you know, super excited about that. You know, yeah. and just just hearing them talk about the film and the things that they liked and loved and uh, about it, it, it you know, it was able to take Tommy out of that. Uh, Tommy and I out of that. Well, maybe, maybe we don't hate ourselves as much as we <laughs> thought. You know, so, but we're again, we're really proud of the film, and uh, uh, we we shot everything here in in Atlanta. Uh, so, if there are any Atlanta folk out there, get the support, support. But uh, it was it was uh, the actual shooting was only really about twenty five days. That's so, but really the good, editing yeah. and post and kids and trying to get stuff going and that that's another uh you know that's a, another thing that's that's what will we'll stretch anything out yeah. uh, so especially well, if you don't have a studio behind you so i mean this this was uh this was your first time i think writing i looked at your bio you've, you've got a really great acting bio but you know only one writing credit which uh, you know i think is you know, hopefully that'll improve because I really I liked the you know I liked the premise of the film I liked your character I liked the uh, you know thank thank you scene. yeah you know this was the uh, the first uh, a lot of the stuff I've have done in the past have been smaller roles or you get really close to these bigger roles and then something happens and and you uh, as an actor you get frustrated sometimes you're like well I'm gonna make make something myself um, and and that's what we did I'd met Tommy. Uh, the director on another set, um, which was one of my first, I did another independent film um, called High Cotton that uh, won some awards and stuff like that. And, and uh, so I met Tommy there, but he was just producing. He wanted to direct. I was like, let's, let's get together and, and uh, just, just do something ourselves. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm excited about uh, writing some more stuff. I just finished a, a film uh, that I wrote with a friend out in uh, LA. But uh, we want to do it this year. But you know, COVID, we, we don't know. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Everything is, it seems like everything changes every day. So you know, who knows? Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw goes. a list of films that are put on uh, hiatus. Uh, you know, for it was unbelievable how long it is yep. of, of just films that are in no man's land right now. You know, then are they going to film? Or are they not going to film? Who knows? So it's kind of hard as an actor. You're waiting around for auditions. It's always slow this time of year anyway, but it's it's been death this time of year. There, there's not uh, been been much. So I'm actually kind of grateful that this film came out you know when when it did just uh people were stuck at home and can uh, you know go and rent it and it just kind of keeps you on uh, people's radar yeah definitely and also you know i, I love that you're still writing and, and and trying to get some films moving because it feels like you know the, the big budgets will come at some point but maybe these smaller you know lightweight uh films are, are kind of what we need to fill the void you know you can you can go out and shoot it in a month you know maybe do about a year turn and then that that can you know still be made and not be super risky because you're you're working with a small crew and kind of a, a defined space so yeah a hundred percent um i'm a big fan of uh duplass mark and 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 jay and you know those guys i've i've seen 
you know, they had a four or five, I don't even know, four or five picture deal with Netflix. And, but the economy, I saw behind the scenes stuff of theirs and it, it felt very much like our film, you know, as far as a six, seven, maybe 10 person crew, you know? Um, so um, it's, you uh, you want to start at a place that uh, is so small that if you were ever able to sell this thing, you know, if you can get it in, at the right price point <laughs> and everything, then, um, you know, it's not a stretch to sell. Yeah. Um, so you, you don't want to say the price and then have them kind of like sit there and kind of blink and then be like, mm, you want to at yeah. least be, be on the door. Yeah, that's right. And I, I hear these people I, and I see interviews of, uh, of, of people just the, the, the stuff that, that they their starting price or finishing price, I was like, whoa, you spent that much money on that. That is that is good for you. That is great. You know, another thing we didn't want to do is um not that there's anything wrong with this, is we didn't Indiegogo this thing or or any anything like that. No, no crowdfunding. Again, not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just like, I feel like people get tired of the film before it even comes out. A lot of times with the, with those fundraising things, you know, it's just like, bam, we're doing this and there's hit, 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 hit. And um, so that's just something that we're like, let, let's just get it out there. We're done. You know, we, we finished this thing and let's just, uh, deliver it to the world and, and and the most important thing for us was just eyes we just want eyes on this thing so that uh you know you never know who's going to see it uh it, it never for us was about uh, making a ton of money or anything like that it's about um getting uh, getting the right eyes on this for uh collaborations and 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 doing future projects yeah no definitely and uh i'm a sucker for uh, uh you know a funny romantic comedy drama so uh, apparently my, my site's pretty much horror and then you know relationship movies so i don't know if there's a intersection there but that's <laughs> yeah that's yeah for sure. do. i that i've i've loved those so much and i i think they kind of you know they they sort of went away but i i think the rom-coms 2021 baby big big strong come come back on the rom-com side all gonna need some good news in 2021 and, and maybe a lot of relationship advice as people come out of their quarantine so it'll be a good time for that to come out yeah yeah for sure the the new the new date night is on the couch uh, yep. you know apparently yep. so but i'm seeing uh you know what uh my wife and and sister-in-law and all of them every time i walk into my sister-in-law and mother-in-law, I, I don't even think still have seen this film. And, uh, and it's like, but every time I walk into the, the living room uh, at their house, they're watching a Hallmark Christmas movie. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, apparently the next film I'm going to make has to be a uh, involved Christmas some, <laughs> somehow because those things are killing. And I'm talking about it's like nonstop. Now's the, now's the time to do it. Just plan it out. You got you got 25 days until uh, you know probably January January second or third. You can you can totally bust one out. Yeah, yeah, that that, that that's it. So, uh, but yeah, we're uh, like I say, still the day. We're super excited about, it, super proud of it, and, and wanted to thank you. That was a very uh, you know very kind review, man. Really appreciate oh. it. I'm happy, happy to do it. I, you know, I always love finding new films and, you know, I always love it when a film kind of speaks to me. So it's, uh, it's, those are the ones that are easy to write. So I always know that that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was really important for me. Like, uh, uh my, my friend, uh, people write different ways, but I, I knew that when we were on set, uh, if I can make Tommy laugh, the director or a couple of guys who are in the scene with me, it's not about who, what's going to get the biggest, broadest, laugh ever you know it's like i'm just trying to make this guy right here laugh and if i can make them laugh then hopefully it'll translate to you know to to everyone else so i was really uh really proud to uh get to work with uh those guys and and the actress terry weibel as uh, she's a sweetheart and i was really um really grateful to that that she came on this project 
Um, and you know, the, the one one thing we did hear is uh, from a lot of the distributors that you know uh, they really like the chemistry between uh, her and I, which is you know that's that's really nice to hear. So. Yeah, definitely in a, in a film like this where it's kind of, you know, a slower pace, but still plenty of fun. Like, you know, the chemistry is super important, especially with a lot of the scenes are just you two. It's, you know, you two yeah. kind of interacting or sometimes, yeah. you know, not even saying things, just kind of like expressions or like little phrases here and there. So that's a, that's a really important thing. Where, where did you, you know, did she just audition for the role? Did, had you worked with no, her? No, we, before, you know, or? everyone in the, uh, in, in the film, we decided not, that's another thing. I've been acting for a long time here in Atlanta, so I wanted to use kind of existing relationships. So my groomsmen, Mark Ashworth, who's done a ton of stuff, and Thomas Elliott, who they both have done like a bunch of stuff. Um, I kind of locked them in, uh, but Wilma, who is the, was the waitress in, in the movie, She's a, an old friend of mine in town, and she actually kind of helped me cast the, the film a little bit. And by casting, I mean that she just would steer us to, like, uh, good actors uh, in town. And Terry, fortunately for us, was in town. She's from L.A., and she was shooting another show for showtime or something like that and showtime basically was putting her up here in town you know paying for her hotel and stuff so we worked it out with her agent just like can we shoot in between her <laughs> shooting the show and that's basically what we did you know most of our stuff was night shoots anyway you know and uh, she was so gracious and and cool so we had terry for I think about 20 days, 18 days, something like that. And she, you know, she crushed it. Uh, and we were super, uh, super grateful to have her. So, Yeah, she was a lot of fun to watch. She's really funny. And she has like these really great like facial expressions that kind of tell you what she's thinking without having to say it. So, uh, Oh, yeah. Was... Yeah, she, she's a great actress. We, I like to play a little bit with the script, especially when you write it or something, you just – I, any film I do, I'm, a lot of times I'm just as not locked in with the dialogue or I'm trying to make whoever laugh or I'm trying to do wh whatever it is. I like to play. And she is like 100% locked into the script <laughs> by the book. I'm doing this like this. So I would, <laughs> but what was cool is she, I, I needed that a little bit, you know, her to kind of, I, I would go run off and, and do something and she kind of pull me back in. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the script because she would not sway at all and uh, she, that's just the type training she's had and stuff so she was she was super uh super awesome like that so yeah, that sounds like a that sounds like a good pair and uh, uh, that was a question i was going to ask is you know as, as the writer and also the star you know how much do you you know stay with the script but it sounds like you just your general style is that you kind of want to explore and, and you know kind of make this well I, I mean happen. just uh, you know, to be very, you know, I'm, I'm very careful in that when I say, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I put in a wisecrack or something like that. And if I can get her to run off into some different tangent, just to get uh, a different expression, I will, but you always steer back to the script and that, that script is, it was super, it's super important for us to, I've heard so many people of uh, of actors who try and do something themselves, and they're like, "Hey, we're just let's just do a mockumentary, and we'll have a we'll just go off of like a you know a, a, a like, like cues or something cues or, yeah. or you know they don't have a script to uh, to go off of, and and that is a recipe for disaster. You know the script." Um, what what is awful is I, when I was writing the script, I was using a, a a program. I was fifty pages into this uh, script. Oh, I don't think I want to hear this. <laughs> I'm gonna cry when I hear this. Yeah, my computer crashed, and I oh, had not saved. I hadn't saved it anywhere just because it automatically opened up. Yeah. You know, every time and just uh, like I was like, I, it was my first script, and you know, I, I just wasn't. And it was oh my gosh, it was gone. 
and I, I 50 pages and I went to a, a friend of mine, actually now my bro- brother-in-law, but I was like, can you, can you find this on my computer anywhere? He's like, I would have to send it off to a company. They might be able to find it. It, it would cost you uh, more than your computer's worth. And I was like, okay. And so after two or three days of mourning, I just said, you got to do it. And I started all over again with a different program and saving and all this kind of stuff. But if you think it's hard to write a script, it's even harder to write a script when you're like, now, how did I do it the first time? What, what, what did I do there? How did that go? And it, it, it's death, right? So, but after a while, you uh, you get back in the flow and you get over that morning, morning uh, and you you get after it. And that's what you got to do. So, uh, yeah, that was that was the big oops with with the movie, though. Yeah, because for me, writing is it's usually the hardest, like just getting content onto the page is always the hardest part for me. Like editing is fine. Like I can go and re-edit and things like that. I can't imagine having done that process and then having to restart knowing that you, like, I think I would just be cursing every time I wrote something like, Oh, I already wrote this. I already wrote this. And I can't, yeah. I can't even imagine doing that. I think a lot of people have, um, have, uh, and I, so you write, you write as well. right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not, not scripts, but I, mean, I, I write, I write other things and I write the reviews as well. Right. Things. Right. I, I just, I, th- I think, um, I, I was re- one problem actors have, I think is they, they wind up in, in limbo sometimes. And I almost was a, in that trap. Um, I was reading a book called save the cat. This is a great script writing a book, screenwriting book, and everyone's, you want to, you want to read this. And I was reading it. And as you go through this, uh, you know, it's like, okay, page 23, you should be uh, ending your first act and you should be going into this. And this section over here by page 48 is called the dark night of the soul. And this happens and then blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. Page 70, there should be a resurrection thing happening. Anyway, the, my, my whole point is I, 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 I was writing and I had that book kind of by me. And then I'm just like, Oh gosh, I don't know if I, am I, what am I supposed to do here? Am I supposed to do this right now? And I sort of fall in the book so much. I was like, man, I'm, I need to get rid of this this book i mean it's in there kind of what i've i've read just trust that you have it and it's in there you've seen a million movies yeah just just do just right you know life's going along good rip the the carpet out from under them then let's build them back up again and let's rip that carpet out again and let's let's ebb and flow and 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 make things happen you know and and that was kind of I, I guess my point is, if it, to anyone who's a writer, if you find yourself just sitting there with your wheel spinning, uh, uh, you can get lost in the reading of the books and the, all the other stuff and find out, hey, I, I haven't written anything in three weeks because I'm, I'm so busy trying to figure out what the formula is. And the formula is just sit down and write. That's a formula. No, definitely. I mean, I think, and that's, that's why it's always the most painful part, but I just, you know, sometimes I don't even really care. I just need to get words on there and then I can go through and kind of re-edit the thoughts and whatnot, but just getting like a blank page is the worst possible start. So yeah, to your point, you could just be playing the entire time, but at some point you just need to get down there and do it. And, you know, you'll go through iterations and, or maybe, maybe you'll get it to restart your, your whole process again. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, I, I remember going to uh, audited a uh, screen writing uh, class and the guy who wrote Lonesome Dove, which is awesome. Uh, the, the guy who wrote awesome uh, uh, Lonesome Dove was there. And that's exactly what he, I remember him saying that. It just echoed in my mind. It was like, you're not going to feel like writing. Uh, most of the time and it's probably going to be crap but you got to sit down 
and you got to do it. And the more you do it, the better the stuff is going to get, you know? So, um, have you ever heard of the book, um, the war of art? No, but not the art of war, (laughs) my son Sue or whatever. This is called the, the war of, uh, art. And, uh, it is what I would tell any aspiring writer to, um, to read. And he says that we, as writers, whether you're writing a blog or a view or whatever it is, you have an enemy and that enemy is resistance and resistance could be, uh, your wife saying, Hey, let's go to, uh, do this or your girlfriend or your whatever. Let's, let's go do this. It, it could be a, a movie. Hey, I'm supposed to watch movies, right? That's what I do. I'm in the business. I need to watch this but it's anything that's taking you away from, from that writing and you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have that, that time. And once you sit down and, and knock it out, then you can do whatever it is. But if you give in to that resistance and resistance is one, anyway, it is uh Prescott. I can't remember his first name. I think it's press Pressfield or Prescott is the author and it's, uh, the War of Art. It's an amazing book. I always tell everyone to read it if they can. So no, that's that, that's really good advice because it is one of those things. I mean, it, it, and it, it's not just with writing. It seems like with everything. Like if there's something that you need to do, there's always something else that you could do. And yeah, like for me with my, my reviews, I try to write them as soon as I'm done with the movie because if if I don't and I will start another movie, then it just kind of builds up, and then eventually you've got a backlog that you're just trying to like you're just thinking about nonstop, constantly, and you're worried that you're going to forget things from one movie and. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, that's, that's yeah, it's fresh. You want to do it when it's fresh, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think your point about having a script is really, really smart. Because one of the things I liked about this movie is you've got so many scenarios that kind of happen one after the other. And I think if you didn't have that structure, you know, something might have lingered or, you know, you might have, you might not have had so much variety. I mean, your night was like 45 hours long, just judging from all the various places yeah. that you went, yeah. and things that you yeah. did, but I really liked how, how much there was packed into that night. And I think that you're, you, you know, you having a script is probably part of that because you were able to plan out each scene. Of only sure. Catch sure. We, we I, you know, there's a lot of films our size that is like, we'll just, film in a cabin in the woods and that'll be the only location and that'll be this. And again, all that is fine. Uh, but for a film, our size, um, we covered a lot of ground and we're in a lot of locations, you know, so, and that's, uh, hard to do. Uh, and you know, of course, uh, the, the, the film takes place with a lunar eclipse and stuff. Not that we had special effects or anything, but the, the lighting guys were really, good as far as like kind of uh emulating an eclipse and 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 all that kind of stuff so uh and my, the director tommy he he made a really good choice in my opinion which was um he locked every shot instead of being like most a lot a lot of indie films, we're going to go all handheld and it's going to be blah and this. And, you know, it's cool and it has a cool vibe. Uh, but the, this is more, again, like a traditional rom-com. Everything, every shot's locked off. And um, so there's not a lot of, uh, of, of movement. Uh, mm-hmm. I think there was only one or two uh, handheld shots in the, in the whole film, you know, so. And, you know, all those all those various activities, you know, I think that that was, that's the right choice. You've got kind of, I'm trying to think back to some of the scenes and yeah, I didn't notice it when I was watching it, but you've got, you know, like the scene with the porta potty where you've got that, that perfect little (laughs) shot that that gets everything in frame without needing to show more. And there isn't, you know, right. Right. Yeah. There's so there's wedding venues and, uh, and, uh, you know, the bowling and wrestling and all this, it's all over the map where, where this, this night, uh, goes, but, um, Again, the whole idea is, you know, it's a rom-com. It's not, a, it's not, uh, you, you know where the destination is going to wind up. Um, but we just wanted to get there in a fun way, hopefully. And, um, uh, I personally in this crazy time where everything, whatever, 
I I think just a sweet little film where people can kind of get their minds off of whatever's going on in their life is a good recipe. And uh, that that's kind of what we were going for. So. And do you know where the destination is going? You might not. You have to go watch the film to find out. Who knows? Who knows that's where right. it's going to go? That's right. Um, <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, one thing I was wondering, you had such such good variety in, in the activities. I mean, are you just like really hip? Do you just go out a lot more than like me? Like I, I don't go out anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty boring. So like where did you find all these activities, these things that you, I have you normally cabin did? fever, uh, but, but yeah, you know, you, you just use your imagination. Um, but yeah, uh, I try and get out as, as much as I can. It's harder with the, you know, with the fam and stuff, but um, yeesh. That that was a lot of uh, you know two a.m. three a.m. shoots going on there too. Yeah, so we we were shooting uh, awfully late at night when we were doing these things. But um, yeah, N nothing is more uh, to me more fun than um, and there's no better way to get to know someone than going on on an adventure. And by adventure, I mean just going to the discover a new city or a new place you've never been uh, mm -hmm. that is the closest way to grow with someone so in my opinion um so two strangers meeting up if you go through a bunch of different things like that who knows you know maybe uh maybe love could spark uh, after all so there we go that sounds like the tagline um and you know one one other question the, the the there's a scene where you sing and play the guitar was that was that you or are you just a, a yeah yeah that was actor? me i you know i'm not uh a pro but i i've always tinkered and my dad played which i think i mentioned in the movie a little bit and i kind of learned from him and uh, i'm i'm you know i'm i'm just a rhythm guy but i do like to write songs and joke around and have done plenty of open, open mics and that kind of thing you know so uh, again that's that's a fun goofy kind of throw in a little rap stuff going in there you know and a, a little uh singing and and whatnot it's, it's just fun so those are those are memories uh that that would draw two people together you know so yeah, well, tough stuff winding up in situations will we'll get any uh two people uh closer really Definitely. quick I, I think so and the rap scene was uh, the, the rap part of it was was kind of surprised i thought it would be something sappier than you know your, your character kind of jumps into this uh this rendition of a song that i didn't expect so uh, that was that was a fun uh a fun little yeah addition. yeah I, I can flow with the best of them so <laughs> uh, if you want to beatbox right now i'm down for throwing something i'm totally <laughs> yeah come on now please let's stop for you <laughs> yeah um, we have to wait a few hours and uh you know, yeah that's right rolling first and yeah. that's right that's right <laughs> but um yeah yeah she was fun and the crazy thing about that scene is uh you know i kind of had everything mapped out but i was like look you just gotta trust me on this kid we're gonna just come up and we kind of did that like in and her response and everything uh you know i kind of rap a little bit and leave her a line to say and she all that was natural in her first first time response and i thought she did great oh that's awesome i thought i thought it looked very natural i didn't realize that that was uh that was true off the cuff yeah 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 so we 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 had uh we had yeah it was just a fun fun scene you know so uh but but uh my my brother-in-law actually is in that scene. He's the the really bad singer. At the, there's a really bad. I don't know if you remember the guy. Oh, right, he right just, at the start. At the start, he's just singing <laughs> over and over. I'm falling yeah. on the ground or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, I was like, "Come on out, dude. Just do this for me." So, um, <laughs> but yeah, sometimes you grab who you, who you can. You know, we. The majority of the major roles in the film were uh, uh, pro actors that I've worked with. We had a couple offshoot characters that um, it, it would 
was their first time. You know, they had done some theater or something like that. But, um, but I knew if I could get the the main core of actors strong, then if there was any anything on the offshoots, that they would be fine. So that's what editing's for. So. Yep. Which, which you also did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've got one more question and, and then I'd like to go to the lightning round, which is just kind of short, lightweight questions about the film and the characters uh, and kind of see how you map onto the characters. They're all about prostitutes. Just kidding. They're, they're not. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> they're they're right. very lightweight uh, and, and very answerable, but you can always choose not to answer. But I would like to say there might be some spoilers in this part. This is the more spoiler side of it. So if you're watching this and you haven't seen the movie, you should go check it out. It's available digitally. You can, you know, rent it, buy it on pretty much any platform and then come back and watch some of these insights and, and, and see if you learn something about the film. You probably already have since, you've, you know, there's, there've been a lot of great things dropped, but um, so uh, this question is, you mentioned that you kind of knew where the film was going. And I imagine that the ending was always kind of the way it was, but were, were there ever alternate versions of the ending where, you know, characters might have. Ended there, was an alternate, uh, there was an alternate, there was an alternate ending. Um, the alternate ending was this. There's a scene in the film with the Hispanic guy. It's kind of a thug I, where I, 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 he thinks I steal his girlfriend and he lays down in the car. You know, you know, I'm talking yeah. about that guy. Um, the, the, the line in the, in the credits were the, it was like a, like a blooper where you like, oh, like, oh, tattoos or something like that. He just started laughing. That was really Oh yeah. Yeah. He's great. He, he that's Carlos Avalos. He's a great actor too. He does. Uh, he's been in a bunch. Um, but the original uh, ending was uh, myself and Terry are on the beach, and um, but it's more of a tropical vibe, and she uh, kind of uh, we're, we're sitting there, and a waiter comes over with like two pina coladas, and and uh, says, "Hey, this is from the couple over there." And we kind of turn and look, and the the table's empty, and we're like, "What?" So we just kind of whatever, kind of uh, clink our glasses and take a sip. And she kind of Terry kind of gets up in my lap, and uh, she gives me a kiss. And then I look at her, and her face just like drops, and and it's like, "What is going on?" And she's looking back behind me, and I turn around, and it is the hispanic dude and he's he's ripped with the tats and he's coming straight for me and uh he uh comes up to me like he's about to crush me he grabs my head like this and then he gives me a huge kiss on my forehead and i'm like what just happened and all of a sudden uh his girlfriend comes up um. and gives him a kiss and he's like, ah, oh, we're together. We're on our honeymoon right now. Thank you. And uh, and we're kind of like, oh, thank you. And anyway, the four of us walk off down the beach together. And that was kind of the original ending. But we couldn't <laughs> we couldn't get all the cast together, uh, you know, because it was it was uh, a little bit later. So yeah, we weren't able to get them all together. So I had to come up with something different. Well, I think the ending was uh, I think the ending was good. I think that 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 would have been funny, but it might have. Um taken away from the, the overall kind of draw of the film so yeah yeah all right so lightning round again feel free to pass any of these they're, they're pretty answerable uh and the, you know they all kind of relate to things that happen in the sure. film so uh what's your go-to breakfast order say that one more time what's your go-to breakfast order What's my go-to breakfast order? Um, Is it exactly what you ordered? I think it was like uh, I, 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 it, I'm not that anal, but I do love crispy bacon. I have to be honest with you. <laughs> um, and lately, my go-to uh, breakfast order has been a. Uh, this is from the Waffle House. It's just a uh, eggs scrambled with cheese with the crispy bacon, and it's all in a biscuit. So a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. A good, that's a good one. And they, they get the crispy bacon right? They get the, they get it the right. crispy bacon is super important. And I'm a little <laughs> bit anal. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll be like, can, can you burn it? I think they call it dead bacon. That's what I've learned. Just kill this thing. So. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. You, you like what you like. If you're going to pay for it, right? Like, and they can that, do it. Yeah, that's it. I try not to be. I, uh, uh, I've never done the thing that 
<laughs> growing up like I have on Wilma, which, by the way, is my mom's name. And she has red hair. So there you go. So this, oh. this was also deeply psychological for you when you were rebelling against the breakfast that you got that were disappointed as a child and you needed to kind of let that go. Like, I see where this is all coming from. That, that's right. That's right. Um, so do you like grits? I don't. Okay. Uh, if, I, if I do eat grits, um, it would have, they would have to have cheese in them, cheese grits. Um, the the accent, way you can, can you tell admit that you don't uh, like grits? Is that is it allowed? I know. Being a Southern boy, you'd think I, I wouldn't, but they're they're just bland. I grew up with nothing. Uh, it would be like grits with just a blob of butter in the middle of it, and and it's it's not good. The way you can tell a grits poser is, uh, if they say they want sugar in their grits, then they're like a Yankee or something. Okay. <laughs> they're they're not from the South. They're they're posing. So. Uh, Anyway, um, yeah. Have you ever yelled at a server? I have never yelled at a server. Um, I've, I've, of course, I've been upset uh, <laughs> a couple of times. I had a server bring me uh, my bill one time, and we never got our food. And and I, you know, the only other time or something, I think I, I got a piece of wax paper with the cheese on like a burger. You know how they oh, whatever separates the cheese. Yeah. I was like, this isn't very appetizing. Can we? Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not. I I try and um, yeah. I hope I'm not a douche. I hope not. So I, you know, they. Even I think sometimes if they give me bad service, I may give them a better tip just because I, I've, I'm like, man, this person has to be having a crappy day. Let me just double up, you know, on this tip. So, um, but anyway, yeah. Um, have you ever been like, I guess, ghosted on a date or kind of stood up on a date, uh, in your in your history, I mean, it sounds like you're happily married, so maybe it's been a while. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I've not been ghosted on a date before. I've tried. You know, I'm I'm the guy who always had the eternal crush on whatever girl. You know, I I, I always tell my friends is I had this crush on this girl in, when I lived in California, and my buddy was in college, and she went to his school. And um, he's kind of set it up where he was like, hey, can you drive her home real quick? He was being a, being a champ, a wingman for me. Anyway, I had a Nissan Sentra. It was old as the hills. And this girl got in my car and she's talking to me and she reaches up like this to grab the seatbelt. But instead of grabbing the seatbelt, she grabbed the lining that was around the the door the the window of the door if that makes sense and it just when she went like this it just started peeling it, started, <sighs> it just started peeling off and she 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 looks back and realizes that she's peeled it off the door and and then she's like oh i'm sorry and she just lets it go and it just flops on her like this <laughs> so i gotta get, walk all the way around the door open the door i'm like because it was an old car and i was kind of like pushing it up into the thing and needless to say uh that that date did not uh really work out so good times well yeah sounds like everything worked out for the better anyways so. yeah that's right that's right um have you ever stolen bowling shoes N I have to think about this one <laughs> Oh, wait. I think the only pair I've stolen is for this movie, which I haven't. I didn't really. I didn't really steal. I I was friends with uh, with um, the uh, manager of a bowling alley. I was like, "Can I can I just get two pair of shoes, bro?" And he was like, uh, "Yeah," but I think I still have them. So I think technically, maybe I I told him I'd bring them back. Oh. Uh, see that that's the ceiling for he, he he lent them to you at the start so that's not it but that's not right them back. I, I have them still i will but he's not manager anymore 
I don't even, so, but yeah, I'll, uh, that's, that's the closest I've come for this movie. It's our secret. Don't tell us all. There you go. Well, and you know, I think at this point you should hold on to them because it, yeah, it's now sure. movie memorabilia. You don't want to lose those. So. That's right. Of course. Of course. Uh, how is your bowling game? It's a, it's a solid one thirty, one fifty, somewhere in there. So. That's, that's good. Yeah. That's very respectable. Yeah, I think the best. I, I I will say that I haven't gotten a turkey before, so that that's reputable, you know. So yeah, no tur turkey oh. stuff. I, I I get I get one occasionally. So yeah, uh, my problem is I like to do like the two finger bowling with with the big curve because it's just a lot more fun. But that means I either get like all strikes or all gutter balls, and there's really no in between. So yeah, I don't have I don't have that uh, skill. I see those guys and they're their own point i i don't even know how they do it so you just what what do you what do you do you, uh, the, you you're so you using just, these two in your thumb no you just use these two fingers no thumb you kind of grip the ball like this and you kind of tuck it under your arm and just kind of chuck it and turn your arm at the same time and you just kind of got to get the you know the, the curve that you think it'll get um and and i'd say like 80% of the time, I'd start with gutter balls, and eventually, like, I'll kind of hit a groove for a little bit, and then I'll go back to gutter right. balls, so. But, you know, for that 10 minutes, I feel like you're crushing it, it. So it's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him. I just never knew how they did it. <laughs> um, do you own a tux? For the movie. I, 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 the, one, the one for the movie, yeah. That was it, so. It's a good purchase. It was, a, I, I guess, I, you know, we went and bought three tuxes and, and that was it. Um, so I guess I own three tuxes. So, yeah. Lots of variety there. <laughs> it's not, it's not a, a, they're not very uh, good tuxes. You know, I don't even know where we got them, but something, some warehouse or, or you know, thing. But it, I was like, I don't care, you know. Have you ever been to an amateur wrestling match? I have. I have. We have a family reunion in Swainsboro, Georgia, and we went to one down there, and it was amazing. So much fun. Mm -hmm. Just like <laughs> – it's bad. It's fun because it's there's no one in the audience except you, and you can, like, yell and start fights with the – wrestlers themselves you know as i it, one of my favorite moments is i remember this guy just threw threw another guy out of the ring and it's really bad and uh he didn't have anything else he could do to him so he just picked up like a garbage can and started pouring garbage over <laughs> i was like dude uh, this is rough but yeah it was it was uh it was pretty awful but it was fun have you ever locked someone in a porta potty? Never, never. No, nah, haven't locked anyone in a porta potty before. Have you ever but tipped over a porta potty? What's that? Have you ever tipped over a porta potty? Nope, just the one. Just the okay. one. Uh, so, yeah. You ever sung yeah, an no. open mic karaoke? I've done plenty of open mics. Yeah. Awesome. So, it's fun. Um, have you ever intentionally broke dinnerware or glasses, for, you know, I don't know, frustration or for fun or just to be crazy? I don't know. I don't think intentionally, um, or maybe for a bit or, uh, uh, but yeah, no. Tidbit of information about that scene. Terry. When she hit her her plate in that scene, a shard came up and sliced her lip, and it was just like it's still there, and the in the like just instant blood came down, bro. If it had gone here, here, an inch here, 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 she would have had a scar or something. Yeah. It was like it was like a miracle that, Oof. yeah, it was crazy. I don't even know how that happened, but. Yeah, that and and it was because she was filming something else too. So that might have, yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. She yeah. was getting awful, but she was a trooper, such a good yeah. trooper. So yeah, that's crazy. I wouldn't even think about that. Like I would think, yeah, you just 
break it and then you know yeah 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 i don't know how it happened i think the way she's holding the bat like Mm -hmm. uh girls sometimes uh, she was holding it a little bit higher up here and it just like like when you swing when she it it just wound up being right by her face or something i I don't know it was just like you talk about uh, something that could have shut down the whole movie it was that yeah so that was a blessing that her face did not get just chopped well, that turns into a very different movie when you accidentally murder your date. And that <laughs> That's right. A whole That's new right. set of scenarios. Oh my through. gosh, it was uh, it was awful. But yeah, we uh, we really lucked out on that one. So yeah, no, definitely. Um, uh, and I guess last last question for the lightning round: What is the most elaborate and or expensive date that you've uh, you've done? You've you've planned elaborate and or expensive. I, I, I don't know if elaborate, you know, when I got engaged, I guess, you know, I had the whole day planned out. And um, so that was pretty darn elaborate. You know, we went to, um, started off getting pedicures and then we went to um, uh, this, uh, in the evening we went to this restaurant um, and I had the ring on me. I, I kept having to move it because every time she hugged me, I felt like she was frisking me or something. Um, and then, um, yeah. Anyway, it was a, it was an orchestra involved and a and a, a, a big garden. Uh, and uh, anyway, it was a bunch of, of stuff. But uh, I made it seem like the entire. Uh, the entire uh, night that I wasn't going to do it. And so I basically was taking her home after we had an amazing day. <laughs> and uh, then we kind of cruised by a little church where we got married at and kind of, kind of just proposed to her there. So anyway, that was it. It's was, it was kind of sappy, but. Well, that's a good answer. Um, I guess you know, the last question is, you kind of already mentioned it. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you've written something else, but I guess what's next for you uh, now that the film is out and you're, you know, promoting it and whatnot? What, what's what's next on the horizon? Yeah. Uh, so hopefully this this film will, will get to knock out this year. Uh, we're super excited about it. Just right now, I have a couple of people kind of reading it. We're, we're going to do some rewrites, and who knows? Just hoping COVID, just like everyone else in the world, that this thing gets to where we can get somewhat back to normal. Uh, hopefully we'll have some uh, beginning of the year uh, auditions and, and stuff. I have a, I think a film called Tyson's Run, maybe it's in post-production. I don't know when that's coming out. Um, and, uh, but yeah, pretty, uh, pretty much waiting for this, this new film to, to, to kick off if, if we can get it going so perfect well that sounds like a sounds like a good use of your time i'm glad you're you're using covid wisely and you know kind of writing more and trying to make more films so so that's, that's it, a fantastic man. use that's great man well thank you so much for having me brother again i really appreciate it and appreciate your kind words and and hopefully uh people will go out and see still the day Definitely, yeah. It's available digitally through Gravitas Ventures, so you can check it out on pretty much anything. And this is Jody Thompson. Thank you so much. Hey, man. Thank you, David. Appreciate it, brother. That was Jody Thompson, who wrote, started, and produced Still Today. Still Today is available digitally, so you can check it out on pretty much any platform. And you can also check out the review on watcherpass.com. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot and make sure all my new interviews go straight to you. And as always, please go to watcherpass.com for all your movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Thank you. Thank you.